So we've got you and Tyron, and that's absolutely set. If we were to look at that division, though, and look at a match that could be the number one contenders match, if you will, uh, for the winner of you and Tyron, who would that be? Does Darren Till fit into the mix? Does Usman fit in the mix? Should they be fighting each other? Did I just make a great match? Should they be fighting each other? Who is next in line after you and Tyron? Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, you, you can't say D- Daryl Doughboy because, you know, he can't even make weight. Because the, the weight of, issue. Yeah, he's the king of the catch weights. He's not a welterweight. He's not a middleweight. So, you know, he hasn't made weight. You know, I, Is there going to be a punishment there, Kobe? I mean, it used to be, to remind five years ago, if you didn't make weight and it was a number one contender's fight, you were no longer the number one contender. That seems to, people are kind of turning a blind eye to that. But it does seem like, no, we need to go back to that. It's very important if you're in a number one contender's match. And, again, we go back to our wrestling days. You don't even step on the mat. And nobody exactly. talks about, like, uh, you know, with Yoel Romero. He was two tenths over. That was a big storyline. He was two tenths over. I don't know a damn thing about how much a guy is over. It's pass or fail. Exactly. And it does seem like in MMA this is something that we're just looking away from. But doesn't the integrity of the sport largely depend on you making the weight class? I think so. You know, we're, we're professionals, and, and we're obligated by contract to make that weight class. And if you're not making weight for a number one contenders fight, how are you going to make championship? Right. right. So, you know, it, you got to show that you're ready to make championship weight in that number one contender's fight. And, you know, he's not being a professional, and that, that's not what's going to sell to the audience. So if you took him out, Usman's a good, right? I mean, Usman's been on quite a roll. And uh, who else would you turn to? What am I missing? Wonder Boy? Bring Wonder Boy in? Yeah, maybe Wonder Boy. He's getting old, man. Choir Boy, he's looked real, you know, he doesn't sell either. He runs back and fights, and he doesn't even want to fight anymore. He doesn't look like he's interested in being a real fighter. He looks like he's just showing up for paychecks now, and, you know, he's not He's not going to make fights exciting or great again like myself. He's just going to back up and, and look for a counter strike and, and win a point fighting competition. So, you know, the division is, is you know, it's the most competitive division ever, but it, it, it's just a bunch of gatekeepers right now. It's, there's no one that's really standing out, and that's why – you know, after I beat Woodley, it's going to have to be someone like Connor. You know, I know he's sniffing all his money up his nose. So that little leprechaun, you know, he's going to know that I'm coming and that's going to be the fight. That champ champ stuff, you know, he wants to go down as the best ever. That champ champ, you know, that's coming easier by these days. It's champ champ isn't that big of a deal. If he wants to be a real deal, you need to do champ, champ, champ. And that's what the opportunity uh, Connor would have with me. If he came to 170, he'll, he'll have a chance at a third belt like he's talked about in the past with Dana and, and uh, I'll send him back to Ireland crying. Well, now, wait a minute. This is very interesting. I mean, Connor, Connor's a madman, but he's not crazy enough to come get in your wheelhouse. Or do you think he is? You're laying the groundwork for Is Connor McGregor crazy enough to come in the ring with you? I don't think he's crazy enough, but he has a big enough ego that money talks for him, and I can make his UFC bank account, or I can make his bank account great again. Oh, yes, you could. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes, you could. He might be crazy enough. You right. know, you say whatever you want about Conor McGregor. If you call him a coward, you are not telling the story truthfully. He's a lot of things, but he's not a coward. I don't think he would come and get – I don't – wow. He coming up short against Colby Covington. I'll tell you that much right now, but he might do it. He might he do it. Might do it. I, I don't think so. You know, they're talking about him, Khabib. I tend to completely believe that. I don't think there's any way to get around that after Busgate. Uh – how does he do there? Does Khabib take him down and smother him? Or is there more to the Connor story than... I mean, how good is Connor? Apparently, he's yeah. pretty damn good, right? Yeah, he's pretty good, but I think he's one-dimensional. I think in the Chad Mendes fight, you had an out-of-shape 45-pounder come in and take him down and control him for two or three rounds. So you get a bigger guy, lightweight, you know, like a Khabib or even a welterweight, and when you take him down, it's a lot more weight on you, a lot more power behind those ground-and-pound strikes. So it's a different fight. You know, he lost to Nate Diaz, and Nate Diaz was... Like one and four at welterweight, you know he he was not a good welterweight. So and and they fought that fight at welterweight, Nate Diaz and Connor. So he showed that he wants to fight at welterweight. So you know I think uh, Khabib's gonna take him down and, and pound him out, and and then maybe Tier Masir boy wants to come up to welterweight. You know he said he's had some weight problems with the fifty five. You know that might be a super fight that that lines itself up in the future because there's not really any other contenders at one seventy right now.